Direct from Foxborough, Massachusetts, the gem of Norfolk County, and taped at the studios of Foxborough Cable Access, it's Foxborough Central. And here's your host, Bob Hickey. And welcome to another fantastic episode of Foxborough Central. I am Bob Hickey, your host, and I want to thank you for taking the time to join me and my guests as we talk about the people, events, and organizations that make Foxborough the gem of Norfolk County. For those of you who've been around and watch uh, Foxborough Central, you know I love music and I'm always a fan of bringing music to you. This is one of those rare opportunities where I have an opportunity to opportunity twice in the same word, but it's a real opportunity. It's a rare opportunity, it's a good opportunity to bring folks to you and kind of music that maybe you haven't heard before. I'm talking about the banjo and the tuba together, a fantastic local group called Avalon. Avalon uh, is uh, a regional based out of Foxborough Seekonk and they also are something that we here at Foxborough Central are very pleased to uh, host in our studio. And, and one of the things that we did before the show today was we did some music, did we not? We did. Played we a couple did. of songs. We, we played a couple of songs. Of course, I'm talking to Steve Caddick with the Hi, Bob. Avalon. You are the uh, titular head of this uh, fine organization? Uh, yes. And I am. Uh, you've been accused of being the talent. That, that's what they tell me. <laughs> that's what they tell you. So Steve, tell us about Avalon. Well, Avalon is a, the three of us. It's a group, it's a trio. And we play music um, originally from most of the 1920s. But in the last couple of years, we've been trying to diversify and actually incorporate most of the decades of the 20th mm -hmm. century. Uh, so we're playing music all the way up through the 1980s. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit because we had uh, an opportunity uh, at the Maryland Robin Performing Arts Center. We had an opportunity for you to come and practice and it ended up being an impromptu concert and people started wandering up and they ordered pizza. It was a great night. But you played quite the diverse playbook. And when I think banjo, I, I typically don't think of uh, Beatles and, uh, right. and, and music like that. So where did the songbook come from? Uh, well, it's the great American songbook, uh, Mar mostly American composers, although we are diversifying into European and British uh, uh, composers, also the Beatles, mm -hmm. Jerry and the Pacemakers, Stevie Wonder, um, Frank Sinatra, Al Jolson, all, all kinds of of uh, different types of songs, different types of music, played on the four-string banjo. Now, the four-string banjo is a little different than the most popular banjo today. Today, Which it's is? the five-string banjo. It's got that extra string sticking out the side here. And they use three finger picks. We don't. We use a single pick. It's just like a guitar pick. Okay. Uh, I, I prefer a nylon. Some prefer a plastic. It doesn't really matter. But it's, it's a strumming style as opposed to a picking style. And we're going to have an opportunity to hear that style. Yes. Uh, we've got a couple songs that we're going to you know, take some cuts and listen to as we get into it. But before we get there, I'd like to introduce the other members of our, of our band. I'm not going to call you a panel. That would be inappropriate. Uh, Bill Cass. Bill, how are you doing, sir? I'm good. I'm glad to hear that. And nice you are you our today. local connection. You're the one who brought these fine gentlemen into my world, my sphere. And so how did you get involved with Avalon? Well, I've been playing tuba for a number of years. I think I picked it up in 1968. And I never put it down. And I played for numerous groups. Right now I'm with the uh, Bridgewater Antiphonal Brass Society, yes. uh, ba based out of Bridgewater. Um, and I play with another Dixie band, the Bay State Stompers, and also the Dixie Diehards. And, you know, knowing Steve with the banjos, I've gone to these banjo festivals, and I've known Steve for a number of years, and, you know, he's been trying different combinations with Avalon, and, and we, he, we decided to try the tuba with the two banjos, and we kind of like the sound. It's unique. And I enjoy playing it, and we, we, like you said, we have quite a repertoire of songs. And, um, I mean, right now we could probably play for a week and not run out of music. So, uh, um, <laughs> Yeah, so it was kind of a unique thing, and we're, you know, we found a market for it, and we're, we're doing some uh, concerts and gigs and stuff like that. Outstanding. So you're liking what you're doing and liking what you're hearing. You're going to keep on yes. doing it. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I'm the rhythm section. You're so. the rhythm. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, we're going to get to hear a little bit of Avalon here in a minute. Before we do, I'd like to introduce you to Paul Poirier. Paul, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, it's good to have you. And if he's the talent and he's the uh, rhythm section, how do we describe you, sir? Well... Um, the master and, and by the, the way, student. you're the one who accused him of being the talent. So I'm not. Yeah, that, no, no, no. I'm not speaking no, no, out of turn. No, no, no. And I and I don't. I. He's the master, and I'm the student. Oh. I I started taking lessons in 1991 from Steve, and I continue to take a lesson every week. 
So I'm always learning something new. So that's why he's the talent, and I'm, I'm, he's the master, and I'm the student. I think and as we watch your performance that we're going to show here in a second, we're going to find out that there are no students here, that this is a very talented group, and we're going to enjoy a little music right now. What's this first uh, number that we're going to play? Those so, Lazy, Hazy, Crazy Days of Summer. That's lazy, it. Hazy, Crazy Days. Let's take it away. Avalon. And we're back. That sounded great, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. So, uh, Paul, I will ask you, since we uh, heard that wonderful number, is it difficult to put those scores into a two-piece banjo and tuba combination, or is it just well, uh, happen? No, it, it doesn't just happen. Um, the, the harmony parts that you'll hear me play in some of those tunes, those are written specifically for me, and they were written specifically for my talent level and my level based on where I am in my own learning curve. So we have a, a gentleman out in Albany, New York, who's written probably 99% of the harmony parts for us. His name is Ed Kababjan. He's a, been a great friend for a number of years. And because he's the only player, the only person that writes any of our harmony parts, we have the distinction of calling him the lone arranger. Aha, the Lone Arranger. <laughs> I'm not going to go down that road, oh, but it okay. sounds you don't, fantastic. You don't have to. Had a quick question. So do you also play with the uh, pick style, or what's your... I, I play a, uh, same, same as Steve, I play a tenor banjo. It's a four-string classic instrument, so this would have been a popularity from the 1920s to the 30s. And it's an interesting little thing about the banjo. Uh, in the late 1800s and early 1900s, the five-string banjo was the king. And then the four-string mm. banjos came in as part of the jazz era, and you couldn't give away a five-string banjo. Nobody wanted them. They almost went extinct until that little guy, Earl Scruggs, came along <laughs> and with his unique playing style, and he literally brought bluegrass to prominence 
with the five string banjo. And so that the whole cycle of banjos has come full circle okay. right now. And that would be a, a style with the picking. And yes. Similar to what you would, of, for of those of us uh, laymen, uh, the Beverly Hillbillies. That's yes. Of. Think about the Beverly Hillbillies and bluegrass. Yeah. Okay. And so, of course, what we're trying to do is we're, uh, we're always trying to make that circle go around one more time because Excellent. we like to see the jazz instruments being played. Well, this, in the song that you just played, it, it sounded, I won't say orchestral, but it definitely had a, a nice uh, musical quantity, quality that was not uh, bluegrass, at least right. in my opinion. Right, I, I, right. There's right. a feel to it. It's just yes. a, a specific style. Yeah. What would you describe that style? Uh, all American. Okay. From the all American compendium of music, you well, uh, choose these songs and... Well, it's American music on the banjo, so that's, that's where it comes from. Okay, okay. And then with the group Avalon, how long has Avalon itself been around? About eight years. Eight years, okay. Uh, in this iteration. All right, and then we're based out of Seekonk, based out of Foxborough? Yeah. Yes, we'll go yeah. with a yes. We'll yeah, go with a yes. yes. Good. Well, that All means, of the above. Okay, and then I also want to mention to everybody that you should become friends with Avalon on Facebook. They actually have a Facebook page. It's called Steve Caddick and Avalon, and you can look them up. If you type in Avalon, A-V-E-L-O-N, you're sure to find them. You can also reach out and find out what the current schedule is, get more information. Maybe you're a banjo player extraordinaire and you want to... Uh, jump in on a session. Uh, I understand that we'll get to a second, but I understand we need some subs every once in a while because these folks are not only accomplished, but they're very busy. And you would uh, reach out to Banjo Paw number one, Banjo Paw one at yahoo.com. So, speaking of going around and about the country, yes. you are a member of the Banjo Hall of Fame. Yes. And that is located where? It's in the American Banjo Museum in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. And you're going out there at some point soon to do a festival? Oh, uh, we just did. We came back uh, about a month ago. Really? Yeah. Paul, I'm, I'm going back out on yeah. Thursday to, to another festival, and there's a board meeting, so I'm, I'll attend the board meeting as well. Because, because you're on the board of directors I'm on of the board of the... directors of the American Banjo Museum. Yep. Awesome, awesome. Mm -hmm. So last week, let's talk about that real quickly, and then we're going to go to another number. Sure. But with that, what was the vibe? How many people? 10 people attended? 20 people? It can't be that many people like Banjo. I love Banjo, but... Well, in the United States, um, there's probably four, five, six hundred four-string players. Okay. Uh, and there's probably three times that amount of five-string players because okay. that's the popular banjo right now. But we're trying to flip that back around again. This was actually a softball question, Mr. Cass, because I understand it was a very well-attended, very dynamic, and, and super enjoyable weekend. So tell us about the weekend. That you the had. weekend that we went yes. to. Yes. That was um, well. Paul can probably tell you a little bit more about that. That yeah. We actually did that on Mardi Gras weekend, and so we went out and played the Mardi Gras at uh, at the American Banjo Museum. And they have inside the museum. Uh, we did a, a cocktail hour and uh, open event. Okay. So uh, people from all over Oklahoma City, and in fact, we've had uh, a number of people who traveled in from the West Coast into Oklahoma and also from Texas to come and uh, be with us on in that particular event. The, uh, the one that's coming up uh, this weekend is more of a local outreach for the museum, so it's an Oklahoma City outreach project. Okay. Smaller, smaller uh, thing, but, uh, but the, we, do, we meet four times a year, so a uh, couple of times a year we try to get Steve out there and, uh, mm -hmm. just to play on our stage, and uh, we, we will fill the auditorium with as many people as it'll hold. So, uh, well, let's uh, take another sampling of something that you might hear if you're going to go to Oklahoma City. And if not, then something we hope to hear around here soon, but something you're going to hear right now, it's going to be what? Hello, Mary Lou. Hello, Mary Lou, right here. Said hello, Mary Lou. Goodbye. 
by heart. Sweet Mary Lou, I'm so in love with you. I knew Mary Lou, we'd never part. So hello, Mary Lou, goodbye, heart. Pass me by one sunny day, flash those big brown eyes my way, and oh, I'm loving of you forevermore. Now I'm not the one that gets around. Swear my foot touched through the ground, and Mel never did meet you before. I said hello, Mary Lou. Goodbye, heart, sweet Mary Lou. I'm so in love with you. I knew Mary Lou. We'd never part. So hello, Mary Lou. Goodbye, heart. I heard your voice. Believe me, I just had no choice. Wild horses couldn't drag me away. I thought about a moonlit night. Arms around you, good and tight. That's all I had to see for me to stay. I said, hello, Mary Lou. Goodbye, heart, sweet Mary Lou. I'm so in love with you. I knew Mary Lou. Oh, we'd never part, so hello, Mary Lou, goodbye, heart. I said hello, Mary Lou, goodbye, heart. That was great. <laughs> Thank you. That Thank was you. great. It's <laughs> fun stuff. You Thank don't you. Hear it was that fun on stuff. the banjo very often. Well, no, no, absolutely not. Not that not. song. Not that so, song, no. So, Steve, you are a. You do this for a living? I mean, is this? Is this yes. Yes. That actually, there's a three-part thing to me in banjos. I, I, my main one is I'm a teacher. Okay. I teach online with Skype. People don't have to get in the car and drive to come to see me. They, I just call them up on Skype at their lesson time, and we do a half-hour lesson. The other thing I do is perform like this with Avalon, and we try to get as many performances as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. And the third thing I do is I repair banjos. Ah, and okay. Sometimes I build banjos. This banjo is one that I helped to build. I was going to say, that's a beautiful looking instrument. This is a great banjo. 